So let me give it a moment to propagate before I go in with my spiel because for some reason YouTube lags a little bit behind. Um, so it cuts off my introductions for some reason. I don't know why. Let me move this down slightly. Okay, good. So introductions. Let's see if this is working. Um, yeah, because I just got the alert now on my phone. So Katie's saying, haven't seen you pop up on Facebook. All right, well, I'm glad I put up the notice then to um, the people that are over on, um, on Facebook um, to switch over to YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so try out try out YouTube. I just got the notice too on my literally on my phone. <laughs> That's just how I'm doing the Instagram. So feel free to drop off of the Instagram, uh, Katie, and I'll see you over on YouTube. Um, so introductions. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Tarot by Hillary Live. I am your hostess with the most is Hillary of Tarot by Hillary.com, professional tarot reader, demystifying the mystery and putting you in touch with the most beautiful gifts, your own intuition, because yes, my friend, do not argue with me, you have intuition. So at the top of the episode, I was just explaining to um, someone on Instagram um, that we're having a little bit of issues with um, my streaming service, not necessarily the streaming service um, itself, but I believe that... Um, Facebook and the streaming service ain't talking really well to each other. So it seems like there are issues happening with Facebook. So if you're joining me from Facebook, awesome. That's great. Um, if you're not and having to switch over to YouTube, um, that's fine too. Um, I put a quick notice and I'm going to move this over because I see we do have comments coming up here. Um, I, okay. So I see Lisa tuning in. Um, over on Facebook. So I'll show that. Hello, Lisa. Happy Friday. Yes, indeed. Right. Um, where did my, uh oh, where did my thing go? Okay. Um, yes. And Katie's just saying now Facebook has finally popped up. Yeah. I was just saying before, um, I was getting alerts, um, that it wasn't working. And I got that alert um, when I scheduled the broadcast. Like, obviously, you, most of you here that are regular viewers know that I do my broadcast at the same time each week, Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But sometimes I don't schedule it, um, schedule it, schedule it <laughs> until the day of. Um, so when I was scheduling around 4.30 for the 6.30 launch, um, it was giving me some updates saying, saying that Facebook was um, having significant difficulties or significant technical issues which might affect the broadcast. So on Facebook, um, I wrote a quick post to say like, hey, just in case things work, don't work out and we're, you're not seeing this on Facebook, you can go right over to um, my YouTube channel and find the same stream there as well. So that is my um, suggestion for those of you viewing through Facebook. Um, if you are having issues, switch right over to the YouTube feed. And I believe it's just youtube.com slash Hillary Tarot. All one word, Hillary with one L, um, if you want to look over there. Um, not to mention the fact that we've been having some issues with like Facebook spammers and trolls lately. Um, fortunately, not last week at all. I think there was maybe one. Um, but, you know, if it continues to keep up, I might just switch over entirely to YouTube. Of course, there are always trolls and spammers, you know, wherever you go, whatever you do. Um, but for some reason, it's just it, like the other week, it was just like a wall of insensitive, inappropriate, weird comments. And so much so that I couldn't see what, you know, real viewers that are here every week and getting something out of these live workshops, um, real viewers weren't, I, I couldn't see their comments because they were just drowned out in a wall of ass hollery. <laughs> so not much more to say about that. So <clears throat> let us get started on tonight's episode. Um, as you can see, we have the agenda right here. 
See, I'm getting the hang of it. I can be a weather girl. Um, agenda is right here. So at the top of the episode, I give you the astrology from Teresa Reed's wonderful Astro Biz Digest. Then we move into the main topic of tonight. Tonight's episode is on the stage cards of the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. I have a couple of book recommendations right here for you guys. Um, and I'm mostly going to be referencing um, Sasha Graham's awesome first book, Tarot Diva, um, which came out in... Gosh, when did this come out? When was the publication date on this? I feel like it was maybe one of the first years I went to um, Reader Studio. So it could have been 2011. Yep, I'm right, 2011 was the press date for this. And I think this was um, Sasha Graham's first book. Um, as of right now, I think she has five or six. Um, so there's um, a bunch of information about stage cards from this book. Um, so I'm going to be referencing that prim primarily. Um, and also, I don't know a lot of about stage cards myself. So this is going to be new to me too, or interesting to me as well. So much in the same way that the student teaches the teacher and the teacher teaches the student, <laughs> it has a little bit of symbi symbiosis happening there. Um, I am going to also be checking in Tarot Inspired Life by Jamie Elford, see if she has anything to say about stage cards, um, as well as Tarot, No Questions Asked, Mastering the Art of Intuitive Reading by Teresa Reed. Um, I have not even been able to crack this book open yet, guys. Um, this is the problem with being friends with so many um, tarot readers and tarot authors is that your friends are always coming out with something new and exciting um, and I cannot keep up. It's a good problem to have, but I can't keep up, guys. <laughs> so, um, and yes, one of these days it'll be my turn and my book out there and people will be saying the same thing to me, hopefully. So I will definitely be looking in here to see if she has anything to say about stage cards. Not quite sure considering um, this is more on intuitive tarot reading, but you never know, right? So <clears throat> how is everybody doing? Um, was there any particular day of the week that you found to be trying or taxing? Um, I have my guesses because I've been looking at the Astro Biz Digest every single day this week. Um, I've been trying to work with that energy rather than against that energy. Um, as Teresa usually recommends that, work with the energy, work with the astrology, don't work against it. Otherwise, you're probably going to have a hard time about it, right? So. I am, I am anticipating, um, hello, whiskey in a teacup tarot. Oh, I like your name very much. Um, so let us move to the, um, the astro weather. And I'm going to pull this up on, um, on my tablet here so that I can pay attention. So we've got three screens going on now. I can, I can do it. Tech wizard that I am. Um, so I'm going to give the astrology for um, for today, for tomorrow, for Sunday, as I usually do. Um, but I have a feeling, guys, knowing the astrology that we've experienced in the past week and knowing which particular days were tough for me, um, I have a feeling that some of you will be like, yeah, tell me what Tuesday was about or tell me what Wednesday was about. Like there, there's a specific day that I'm thinking everyone had an issue. So um, after we're done doing the um, astrology for today and the weekend, um, I'm happy to go back um, if you had a particularly trying Tuesday, for example, and let you know what the astrology was for that day so that you can maybe make make a little bit more sense of the situation. Now, astrology can't explain everything. And sometimes astrology is used as a crutch or an excuse. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to um, give a little bit more of awareness. And, you know, the awareness starts with knowing what the energy is and knowing what the astrology is. So Searching for the 
And let me go ahead and put up the AstroBiz Digest here. It is going to block me out, um, but that's okay. You don't need to see my face. And so that link is right here. Um, if you would like to purchase um, a copy of your own of the AstroBiz Digest, which is really fantastic. I think it's $99 uh for a year subscription and it is at um you can go to the tarot slash astro dash biz dash digest um to get a copy of it yourself um i give enough astrology from this astro biz digest to pique your interest see if you like it um see if it works for you and then you can go and purchase it yourself so that i'm promoting Teresa's work without taking away from her work, if that makes sense to everybody. And I am in the wrong inbox here. Come on. There you are, weekly forecast for the 26th of May 2nd. Um, so yeah, I am I would not be surprised if some of you had um, interesting Mondays or Tuesdays. So let me know if that's the case. <laughs> And I will go ahead and hide this so you can guys can see my face. All right, are we ready for the astrology? Okay, <clears throat> for today, Friday, April 30th, take a business trip or reach out to publishers when the moon sextiles Jupiter at 9.27 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon will be void at that time, so I would recommend remaining patient. You may experience a delay in communications or travel. No worries, though. At 12.16 p.m., the moon skips into Capricorn, and suddenly the energy is practical AF. This is a potent moon for getting big business done. Schedule in the critical stuff today or tomorrow. Negotiate deals, hit up influencers, or make essential decisions. It's all good under the Capricorn moon. The sun conjuncts Uranus at 3.54 p.m. sets the perfect stage for leading groups. If you're hosting an event this weekend, you can put your genius and leadership on full display. Friends will be helpful allies for big vision goals as well. Watch out for haters and whiners at 7.51 p.m. when the moon opposes cancer. Someone may be coming for your crown, and if you see them eyeing you up, sidestep that nonsense. Be above that. Today, Friday, April 30th, is a power day for Sagittarius and a weekday for Gemini. So you hear that, y'all? 7.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be done with this episode. I am not sticking around to see that happen in real time live. <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. Saturday's moon trine sun at 7.12 a.m. puts an industrious vibe into the morning and could be dope for PR campaigns. A bit of FaceTime with your audience could net more cash today, so do not skimp on marketing your awesomeness. Sunday, wow, so that's, that's a really quick update for Saturday, guys. Sunday finds Mercury trine Pluto at 5.19 a.m., an excellent aspect for power messaging. Whether you're putting out a thought-provoking newsletter or taking a stand publicly, this aspect promises your words could deliver a TKO. The moon is conjunct Pluto at 9.54 a.m., heightening intuition. You can feel what people need. Do, do know that this aspect can also bring out the belligerent types. Be prepared to upgrade your boundaries if they start sniffing around your business door or your door in general. 
The moon is void at 1038 a.m. Step away from your desk and head out to brunch with your besties. Business can wait, really. The moon enters Aquarius at 3.31 p.m., perfect for innovation, handling tech issues, leading groups, and connecting with your team. It's also terrific for extending that brunch. <laughs> Why work if you're having fun? Venus sextile, sextile Neptune at 6.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time stirs the creative imagination. Ideas generated this evening may be money makers, so be sure to jot them down. It's also pretty nifty for romance. Gee, Sunday sounds like a perfect day to take off and play. All caps on purpose. <laughs> Both days are power days for Capricorn and week days for Cancer. So we have um, we have a very very interesting energies going on the, um, tonight and also this weekend. Hello to Deanna Tarot Medium and Magic Door Tarot. Gonna wave when I can, if I can. Um, so I am going to ask <laughs> which day you had particular trouble with this week or which day you have questions about while I still have the Astro Biz Digest out in front of me. And I'm going to go ahead and take my hydration break right now. Um, and you guys let me know. If you don't have any thoughts or don't want to revisit any um any particular days this week, um, and I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> we'll move right on to the topic for tonight's episode, stage cards of the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. And my arm is a little bit stiff because I just had my first shot yesterday. So if you see me wince, <laughs> you know the reason why. I'll give it another minute if I don't see any. Um... Oh, no, Katie, I froze on YouTube. So you've po popped back in here. Okay. Hold on. Let me see if I can refresh. What was the last thing I said on YouTube, Katie? I'm going to go ahead and refresh and um, I'll keep my fingers crossed that it doesn't completely cut out. All right. I'm back again. I refreshed. And I, I am still getting an alert about Facebook experiencing major issues at the moment, not available for streaming, blah, 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 blah. So that might be that YouTube is also affected as well. I'm gonna try testing. Really? Okay. So you guys missed out on the Sunday astrology. I can say it again, um, which is interesting. Okay. So Lisa's saying I'm streaming on Facebook and no issues so far. Okay. Interesting. All right. Hmm. All right. Well, Sunday, apparently um, I will yeah, I know. <laughs> and Zuri is saying, and it's not even Mercury retrograde yet. Yeah, I don't even know when the the, the next Mercury retrograde period is. I don't. I kind of don't want to know. At the same time, um, hello, Mimi's Mimi's picks. Hello, hello, hello. Um, yeah. Do you guys want to? Um, I'm seeing your comments. Video froze. Refresh and see if it comes back. Yeah. Hmm. Weird, because it's saying that, that Facebook is the one having the issues, but I guess YouTube's having the issues? Hmm. Don't know. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Yeah, so I can see it. I don't get alerts for the YouTube on, on here. But let me try over here.
It's interesting because um, I just posted uh, today's card of the day from the Fountain Tarot, and I got the Temperance card, and it's an emphasis on walking the middle path. So I don't know, or maybe it's the Temperance card saying, you know, to just let it go, be in flow, um, don't worry so much about it. Maybe you guys not getting the astrology for Sunday is meant to be <laughs> for some of you. All right, let me check here and see. Wow. Yeah, it seems to be like super behind and the moon is void at 10.38 a.m. And I'm also getting beach balling happening too. So who knows? Let's see. Aspect can also bring out the belligerent types. Be prepared to upgrade your boundaries if they start sniffing around your business door. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you guys. Maybe I'm just going to um, have to upload from, from Facebook onto YouTube for this, this week's episode or tonight's episode. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Don't have time to waste on it, right? All right, let's keep going. So for Sunday, um, I, think, I think some of you got got Sunday's um, astrology and everything was fine on, on Facebook. So I'll just take the video and um, when we're done, I will upload it to YouTube and it'll be what it is, you know? So considering that, um, and before I move on to tonight's topic of stage cards um, in the Rider Waite Smith Tarot, does anyone have um, any revisiting of days that they want to come back to maybe monday maybe tuesday which days were you finding particularly difficult let me know and we can revisit them I'm, i'll give you a minute to think about it um, and then we will move on to the stage cards of the rws tarot and keep in mind that this um the concept of stage cards uh, it may apply to different decks or different modern decks, if the um, if the artist chose to go with um, the original like iconography of the Rider Waite Smith deck, it I don't necessarily think that the stage cards are going to be present for a Toth deck, for example, the Toth or the Thoth deck, because it's two different artists. Pamela Coleman Smith did the artwork for the Rider Waite Smith Tarot, and Lady Frida Harris did the um, art for the Toth Tarot. So we are talking specifically about the stage cards of the Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck. Um, and there's a re reason why there's stage cards because of the background that. Pamela Coleman Smith, Pixie, had um, as a set designer, as a stage designer um, uh, in, in England, I believe, for the London stage. So just pop in the chat if you can still hear me and see me, just so I can make sure that... Um, that everything's running correctly. And if it's not running correctly, um, come on over to one of the streams that are actually working at this time. I think it's very funny that, you know, I get an update that it's Facebook that's the problem and now it seems like YouTube's the one that's the problem. So don't know what to tell you guys. And I'm just gonna check on Facebook right now. Even though I believe you guys, I believe you that it's working, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to comment, right? Yep, it says this video is live now. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see it. Hmm. 
I don't know, folks. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Very strange. I'm going to really quickly comment. On here, see if I can see my own comments. Yeah, it's working. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right. I don't see anyone uh, talking about um, what I thought people were going to want to talk about, which was the full moon in Scorpio and how intense that energy was. It was also um, a super moon, a super pink moon in Scorpio. So the energy was very, very intense. And you were feeling that or possibly feeling that on Monday and Tuesday. So um, it could be that people felt it and didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> or it could be that people didn't really feel it as much or just knew how to navigate that energy. So yes. All right. I see you, Lisa. All right. Cool. Let's move on then. Let's move on then to the main topic for the, tonight's episode, which is the stage cards of the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. So, as I said before, stage guard, cards may not be applicable to some modern decks unless, of course, the artist chose to um, to include the stage cards um, as a nod to Pixie, as a nod to the um, the artist, the original artist of the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. Um, hello, the tarot whisper waving to you. So we talked a little bit about this in a previous episode. Um, and I'm not even sure of the context why we talked about stage cards in a previous episode. I think it was in relation to... I, can, I don't even remember. But it came up in a previous episode. And... Um, and, and I was just like, oh, that's that's probably something interesting and probably um, a great thing to talk about and have it have its own standalone episode for one of these weekly shows. So that's why we're doing that tonight. So if you're wondering where I'm getting this information from, I'm sure you can find this information in other books, other reference materials. Um, but this is where I'm quoting from. If I'm quoting from something, Tarot Diva by Sasha Graham. Um, do not be fooled by the cover. Do not judge a book by its cover. Um, it's very flashy looking and it's very like you know, glam, almost influencer looking kind of thing with the um, with the tarot cards and her shades and all of that stuff. So, it, but it is not a floofy book. It's not. Um, this has really, really great information in it. Um, and it is not just a, a surface kind of thing. Um, you can get, there's, there's so many good sections in this. Um, tarot intuition, um, different suits. How does tarot help me unleash my inner diva? Honing intuition list of cards by page, um, different quotes, um, how to use the book, um, different recipes based on tarot cards. Um, I'm seeing a flood of hearts over here um, on Instagram. So Katie says, we were talking the cups card that was a stage card. Thank you. Thank you, Katie, for reminding me. Um, but definitely good reason to talk about stage cards. Um, spell to break in it. So this also has like tarot charms in it. Um, tarot, um, tarot recipes, uh, tarot talismans, understanding court card energy as well. Um, and actually this is one of the few books that, um, really explained court cards to me in such a way that, um, that made me help really help me to understand, um, the court cards and um, the different energies that the court cards present filtered through the suits. So really good reference book to pick up if you're looking to pick up a book. Um, so Lisa is asking one of the questions that I said I would answer in the description of tonight's episode, what are stage cards? That's a good question, Lisa. So Stage cards, um, it's a marvelous hidden detail within the original Rider Waite Smith deck. 
This mysterious fact, often overlooked, can add fabulous dimensions to your readings. Um, so Ryder Waite Smith artist Pamela Coleman Smith drew stage cards that appear throughout the minor arcana. What is a stage card? A stage card is a card from the Rider Waite Smith deck drawn as a, if the action on the card was taking place upon a stage. The backdrop of the card, um, to hold on, yeah, taking place on a stage. The characters stand upon flat and smooth boards as if on the floor of a stage. The backdrop of the card appears flat like a scrim. A scrim is a painted screen used for theatrical backdrops. A double horizontal line represents the spot where the scrim meets the stage. So the divine Miss Smith was, a, was to suffer the fate of many a great artist and dine penniless without knowledge that her work would go on to influence millions of people. She was by trade a theatrical backdrop designer. She painted, constructed, and created sets that appeared on London stages. Her theater background and knack for dramatic expression is probably why the Rider Waite deck is a classic. Her pictures clearly express characters playing out a story. We viewers immediately see the drama unfolding before us in the cards. So that is what a stage card is. They're the, not all 78 cards of the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck are stage cards. It's only 13 cards that are considered stage cards of the tarot that have that that description as if the characters are flat and there is a floorboards on the stage with the scrim. And so Lisa is saying, I figured you were working up to it, but I had to ask. Exactly. <laughs> so um, what is surprising and quite curious is there are only 13 stage cards out of the 78 cards of the Rider Waite Smith deck. 13 is a number of mysteries, even a superstitiously dangerous number. Many buildings do not include a 13th floor. Elevators skip from floor 12 to four, floor 14. 13 is a number known to cause discomfort and suspicion. It's no accident that the death card of the tarot is numbered at 13. It's no wonder that the average Joe doesn't want to disembark on an unlucky floor. Why did Pamela Coleman Smith create stage cards? Why not make them all stage cards? Why 13? How do we apply this notion of theatricism to our readings? So some of these questions we're not gonna be able to answer. But some of them, we can speculate on why she might have done this. Right, not at all what I expected. So fascinating, yeah, exactly. And, um, and Dina says, which is like the number 13. Yep, I am also, which, which right here, also love the number 13. <laughs> totally, Dina, totally. So take a look through your deck, see if you can pick out the stage cards for yourself before looking at the list below. Well, I'm gonna give you the, um, so if you guys are watching the replay, I mean, most of you are watching live right now as I record this on Friday, April 30th. Um, but if you're watching the replay of this episode, go ahead and pause um, the broadcast. If you happen to have a copy of the traditional Rider Waite Smith deck, or if you're like me, groove better with the um, with the Radiant Rider Waite Smith deck. So um, the difference, by the way, if you've got the classic Rider Waite Smith deck, um, the back of the cards are going to be a um, kind of plaid pattern to them. Um, uh, whites with blue stripes through it. So that's more of the traditional Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, this is the Radiant Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, it's pretty much exactly the same, as, except the colors are a little bit more subdued and it has this background to the back. You'll still be able to do the same thing if you have a deck like this too. So pause the episode if you're watching the replay and go ahead and try and look for the 13 stage cards in the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. Um, and then hit play if you weren't able to find them all or if you were able to find them all based on my description. Remember, you're looking for um, the cards 
that are drawn as if the action on the card were taking place on a stage. The characters are flat and smooth, stand on flat and smooth boards as if on the floor of a stage, and the backdrop also appears flat like a scrim, like a painted screen. And then there's a double horizontal line representing the spot where the scrim meets the stage. So I'll give you a clue. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of a clue, a little bit of cheat. Um, look for the double horizontal line where the spot where the scrim meets the stage. And so go ahead, pause the episode if you can, um, and try and look for the stage cards um, before restarting the episode where I give away the answer. And actually, I'm going to bookmark that, take a little bit of a drink. And also, I would love for you to think about, even if you're watching live right now, think about what, what doing that would represent and possibly why those cards, um, why those particular cards, is there an interpretive reason why? Is there an energetic reason why? And what that could represent. Like, what, knowing the difference between, like, say, a card that's not a stage card versus a card that is a stage card. Like, what is that? How does that add to the interpretation? Or how does that take away from the interpretation? If you received a stage card in a reading, um, how would that change the reading for you? Because some of this is going to be speculation. We don't have the luxury of asking Pixie herself why she did what she did um, and why and what the significance is. You know, we don't know why she put a white rose on the death card. We don't know why she um, decided to make a sunset or, or even if it's a sunset or a sunrise in the Ten of Swords. Some of it is our own interpretation and some of it we will never know why she did it. But as with um, many other divination systems, the meaning comes from what we give the cards at that particular moment in time. It's the, it's the reason why you could receive the same set of cards one day and a different set uh, and the same set of cards um, two weeks from now or a year from now. And your interpretation of those cards could be completely different um, because you're different. Your perspective is different or the situation might be entirely different. So stage cards. So I'm going to give you um, the list of stage cards. And also I'm going to let you know what the title of this section is to give you a little bit of a clue as to what stage cards really mean, how you would interpret them. Is the interpretation difference? So the name of the section is stage cards and the way you appear to the world. So the stage cards in the Rider Waite Smith Tarot are the Two of Swords, the Five of Swords, the Seven of Swords, the Four of Wands, the Nine of Wands, the Ten of Wands, the Two of Cups, the Ten of Cups, the Page of Cups, the Two of Pentacles, the Four of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles, and the Eight of Pentacles. And if you need that list again, you can always rewind the episode. So why didn't Miss Smith design all of her cards upon a stage? Why did she choose only 13 cards? We will probably never know the answer. Still, there are no accidents in this deck. Each object contains a specific meaning, a reference to a hidden system of divination. It is important we look at what the artist has given and make our reading soar. So first examine what the word stage means. Then we'll use this implication to inform our readings and questions. Stage by its very definition contains level of meaning. A stage is something you move through. You chat with a friend about moving away from, a, from, from home. At that stage in my life, I needed a break away from my family and experience life on my own. 
A stage can also refer to a horse-drawn carriage, the popular mode of transport used up until the motor car was invented. Understood in this way, this connects to the, sa the stage cards to the chariot, indicating a moment where wheels are in motion and you are moving forward in a powerful, profound way. The universal and most typical use of the word stage is in reference to that platform on which a form of entertainment takes place for a seated audience, a play, musical, dance performance, concert, opera, award ceremony, speech, or presentation. There are three ways in which we can participate in staged events, an audience member, a performer, or a creator. Of the three components of stage performance, it produces questions we can use when a stage card appears in a tarot reading. So you can see it as an audience member, you can see it as the actual performers upon the stage, or you can see it as the writers, directors, stagehands, and constructors of the event that is to play before the hushed masses. So, you know, it, it's very interesting to, to be, like Sasha Graham's um, section on this is very interesting because normally when I'm reading tarot, I'm thinking about two ways of looking at a card. I'm looking at the energy, um, whether it's passive or action-based, whether we are the um, the performer or the observer. I never considered about the, that third option of the creator. Like, where are the writers in this? Where are the, the playwrights in this? Where are the stagehands in this? It's very interesting, actually. So as an audience member, you can ask the following questions, talking about stage cards to help interpret the stage card that you're seeing. Am I waiting and watching, expecting the issue to unfold for me? Am I entertained and amused by the way this issue plays out in my life? Is all this drama worth the price of admission? Can I get up and walk away from this drama? What do I learn as this unfolds? Or do I need Twizzlers to get me through the second act? That's, that's all Sasha, that's not me. <laughs> but it's interesting questions to ask, knowing like the first question to ask yourself is, am I the audience member or am I the performer or am I the creator? So that would be your first level of questions when you see a stage card in a reading. Um, and this, I think, is a really great option um, if you're having trouble interpreting tarot cards or if you need additional meaning out of the cards that, um, that are coming up or if the cards aren't talking to you in the way that you want them to talk to you. If you feel like I'm not getting anything out of this card or out of this reading or I feel like I'm stuck, quote unquote, in a reading, this look for the stage cards and then ask yourself these questions as you go through the list. Like I got the page of cups in a reading, but it's not talking to me. Well, then I would look at the page of cups and I would start asking, am I the audience member? Am I the performer or am, am I the creator? And then start to ask yourself, once you've answered that question, regarding the Page of Cups for that particular reading, ask yourself the sub-level of questions based on whether you're the audience member, performer, or the creator. So, is everyone with me so far? Let me know. I feel like this is um, a, <laughs> like we can go pretty, we can go pretty deep on this. Um, but I want to make sure that everyone's with me before I go on to the next um, set of questions for the actual performers on the stage. So. Okay. I know I'm still broadcasting over on Facebook, so I'm going to keep going unless I hear otherwise. <laughs> so the second level, we are the actual performers up on the stage. We're actors, singers, teachers, dancers, bearing our souls to the audience. Will the audience approve, enjoy, and engage in the story we're about to tell? Oh, yeah. So um, Dean is asking, can you show one card as an example? Sure. So um, before I move on to that second level of questions. Let me go through and see if I can grab one of the stage cards. 
So for example, here I'm pulling the, um, the page of swords right away, but this page of swords isn't a stage card. And you can tell that it's not a stage card because you don't have that double line, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Katie, Katie's saying it requires some thinking. I'll be repeating this episode to myself. Exa exactly. It, it's one of those episodes. You're going to get nice and pruny on it. And I would not, I would not blame you for watching it a couple of times and revisiting this episode. I'm, I'm probably going to end up revisiting this episode as well because it's a different experience again. <laughs> stage card, right? Um, I would be the performer in this particular case. You guys would be either the observer, the, uh, you guys would probably be the observers in this. However, could always be the creator as well. Um, so in this case, or I mean, that's another level, like you don't have to be just one thing. You could be both the performer and the creator. Like if you perform a one woman show, if the page of cups is a one woman show, that would be both the performer and the creator possibly. So more levels of meaning on top of more levels of meaning. And I'm see that I'm seeing that flood of hearts. So um, like for example, here, here's, um, I wanted to grab the page of cups to show you the difference between the page of cups and the page of swords, um, but it's probably gonna be, end up being the last card that I find. Um, I just grabbed the two of cups, which is indeed a stage card as well. Pretty, pretty easy to spot. Like, look for that double, that double horizontal line, like the nine of wands. And now I'm seeing all other <laughs> stage cards except for the one that I want. All right, let's see. Yep, four of wands. That's another stage. Let me go from the bottom. Because I would like to have more of a parallel between the two. How quickly can you rifle through 78 cards to find the one card you're looking for like a needle in a haystack? See, and there's the Page of Pentacles, another non-stage card. There it is, there's Page of Cups. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so um, Dina wanted an example, one card is a, an example. So um, I do have the Two of Cups here. See, notice the floorboards, notice the, where the scrim meets the stage, that double horizontal line. Double horizontal line, look for the double horizontal line, You will that will be a stage card. Um, so here, Page of Swords, Got pages. Let me plug my computer there. Um, so we've got two pages side by side, and as an example, so page of swords. There's no horizontal double line there. Page of cups. Yes, it's more of a stage. So Dina, can you see those two side by side? Let me know. So that's an example of a stage card. Look for that double, double line. And notice also like the, the, the imagery is definitely different between the two because you do have the water element there um, in the page of swords, but it looks, the water looks more natural and the mountains in the different distance look more natural. These waves, look like they're painted on a scrim, painted on a backdrop. Can you guys see that? So it definitely has this kind of sense of this is not real, or this is a representation, or this is kind of more, more cut and dry, or a presentation, rather than um, the page of swords which is almost like where the rubber meets the road like real world like this is the real world like this is a real battle you know and this is just pretend food for thought guys food for thought so uh lisa says i pulled out the cards that i thought might be the stage cards but missed part of your list so i'll definitely be be repeating this yeah look for those um those double the double horizontal line 
and you'll find 13 of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dina says, certainly the fish in the cup is surreal. Right. And it doesn't look like a real fish either. If you look very closely, he does not look like a real fish. Yep, yep. So Katie is saying definitely flat, not 3D to background versus real life. Right. So Lisa says, so this really only works with the rider weight, which I don't have a true copy of. I have a deck whose imagery is based on the rider weight, but I was only partially right. This is way fascinating though. Yes, exactly. So that's what I was saying before, Lisa. Um, it like modern decks may have ascribed to some of the more traditional imagery that Pamela Coleman Smith like was the basis for, the foundation for, but they may not have chosen to include stage cards in their interpret their artistic interpretation because maybe they didn't even realize that portion of the Rider Waite Smith tarot. Yes, exactly. And Katie is saying even his pose is staged. Definitely more staged than um, the Page of Swords. Oh, awesome. By the way, Brian and I are totally enjoying listening to this. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for watching. I love that. Like as long as I can be helpful and entertaining at the same time, awesome. So let's move on to the um, the that second set of questions we were talking about um, if you are the performer. Um, so will the audience approve, enjoy, or engage in the story we're about to tell? And I'll try and hold up the, um, one of these stage cards to the page of cups, right? Um, am I engaged with this issue to grab the attention of others? Um, is there an emotionally addictive catharsis that I experience with this issue or with performing this issue? Do I care too much about my appearance and what others think? Does this issue allow me to freely express myself? Am I too busy trying to please everyone? Especially with the Page of Cups, I feel like that's really, really pertinent. Um, so uh, the imaginary restaurant says, hello, I just popped in and I am completely fascinated. Awesome. Great. So um, all of this information is coming from Tarot Diva by Sasha Graham, um, talking about stage cards of the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. So if you're fascinated, we are all equally fascinated. This is good new information for me too. So I'm really glad that you guys requested um, this particular topic for this episode. Um, you know, it, it really is wonderful. Like learning about something in order to teach it, I end up learning just as much, if not more. <laughs> so thank you for requesting it. Um, okay, so, the, and the third way, the creator, we are the writers, directors, stagehands, constructors of the event that is to play before the hushed masses. We, told, we toil on a mode of expression that comes from somewhere deep inside. It must be played before an audience. In this case, we like, we, like the great Wizard of Oz, tinker behind the scenes, dazzling the audience with the special effects and tricks. So the questions for that, if you're looking at the stage card, for um, as a creator, how am I purposefully manipulating events to get my point across? How do I construct this issue in a physical way around me? What is the subtext, the story I project? Do I care about what reviewers or other people think about me? Or what stories do I weave about myself? Interesting stuff. So again, you can use one of the stage cards, Page of Cups as an example, and have that layer, ask those layers of questions um, if you're struggling with interpretation on a particular card. No matter how we choose to participate in a staged event, regardless of whether we are spectator, player, or creator, we're engaged in a game of heightened reality, an illusion, an act of magical transference and group hypnosis. This is what marks the stage cards as remarkably different than the rest of the cards in the deck. So there's even more, like this is just a small section 
a small section of Tarot Diva. And I'm sure there are other, I'm sure there are other people that have covered stage cards, um, but and I'm probably more in depth, but still like this, this small snippet is really fascinating. And I would encourage you to do further research of your own if you're interested in stage cards. So um the Rider Waite cards, this is a historical note, the Rider Waite cards were born at a sliver in time when theater was the mass form of entertainment. There was no television, internet, video, or films. Did Pamela Coleman Smith somehow foresee entertainment would eventually be projected onto screens for the masses? This idea is expressed in the Seven of Cups card. We see the silhouette of a man who appears to be looking at a projected screen of choices and imagined reality is playing out before him. If you wish, you may use the Seven of Cups as a modern stage and screen card. So let me grab. So the Seven of, the seven of Cups isn't one of the stage cards, by the way. <laughs> no, the Seven of Cups is not one of the stage cards. But I do know what she's talking about for that and I can I can um I can pull that up right now actually. Sorry, I can't project it um on here on uh Instagram for you guys. I don't have the capability. I don't have the technology yet. But I can project it over um on the other stream. I'll try and find it um in the deck to hold up Like I said before, I'm gonna find it at the bottom of the deck or I'm gonna find the last, it's gonna be the last card I touch. <laughs> it's interesting though, because I mean, like here's the seven of swords right here and that's, it's got that double line there too. Um, it can, it can be, it's, it's almost like, um, the stage cards are almost like describing my experience with the tarot in general, that it's like you have to have it laid out in front of you in order to be able to understand what you're going through or what you're feeling or um, where you are in that particular situation. If you're projecting or if you're receptive, are you the creator? Are you the observer? Um, are you the performer? Is it a performative kind of thing that you're doing? I found it. Now I can take down the, here's the, here's the seven of cups. Here you go for Instagram. Uh, Katie says, I find that projection on the seven of cups like a screen in the mind. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I think that's kind of what Sasha was trying to say there. Um, that it's, it's almost a little bit precognitive in nature that um, how, how, how much we're tied to our screens or we're tied to the, the mass entertainment of a screen, right? Um, <clears throat> in examining a stage card or in the idea of a filmic life, it is worth a minute to think how we view ourselves, the star of our own personal drama. We tend to understand the world in the context of how it affects us. The world, our lives can be understood as a movie playing out before us, a movie in which we take an active part. Our family and friends, the recurring characters, people on the streets, the extras are bit players. It's perfectly normal to view our lives this way. Our point of view extends from inside ourselves, our eyes, the lens of the camera. We point, shoot, and focus on where we choose, what we choose at will. Um, a disconnect happens when our cameras roll if we begin to take everything that happens to us personally. The bank teller is grumpy at you while making a deposit. We wonder, why doesn't she like me? A speed demon cuts you off in traffic, honking at you. It riles you up. Why is that guy being such a jerk? I'm just driving here. Arriving home from work, your significant other ignores your cue for, your, for a hug. He doesn't love me. <laughs> Stop for a moment. We assign personal meaning to every little thing that happens to us. Stop for a moment, freeze the frame. The bank teller was sad about her son and angry to be at work. That informed her exchange with you. The speed demon was rushing to his hospitalized mother. Your significant other was wrapped up in their own thoughts. 
your child acted out because she was overtired. None of these things had anything whatsoever to do with you, yet you assigned personal meaning to them. The lesson of starring in your own film, don't take it all so personally. It ain't all about you, no matter how much you wish it were. The Ten of Cups, for example, takes place upon a smooth stage, but the double horizontal line between scrim and stage does not appear. Rather, it stands as a thick black line, as if to indicate that the fi finale of action has been reached and the backdrop has unraveled and dropped behind the performers, a happy ending in this happily ever after card. Interesting stuff, guys. We got real deep and pruny with this book. Let me quickly look through um, Jamie's and Teresa's books just to see if they mention stage cards at all. But we've got tons of information to work with just from that one section of Tarot Diva. So, and I'm seeing a flood of hearts over here. <laughs> um, I know that Lisa is looking at the Salvador Dali deck. Mm hmm. Yep. I'm looking at Dolly's version of the Seven of Cups, and it's interesting that he omitted the veiled figure and instead left an empty cup. The book talks about this, signif signifying missed opportunities or missing opportunities. Wish I could share a picture. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, um, I don't know if you can share it in the chat. Um, you might be able to, but also you might not be able to. But definitely share it in the chat if you can. Um, and I'll, you know what? I'll try and project it. I'll try and find it and project it. See if I can do that right now. Salvador Dali. Seven of Cups Tarot. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm seeing the same thing as you though. Oh, I see there's one empty cup. I think I'm looking at the correct one. Let me save the image. Let's see if I can project it. All right, projecting that now. And I'm gonna hide your comments. Is this what you meant? Sorry to everyone watching on Instagram. I don't have the technology. Um, so Lisa, just say just say yes or no. Um, unfortunately, if you're texting it to me, I'm not gonna be able to look at it because I'm over on um, Instagram. Yep, I think I, yep, I think it's the same, it's the same picture. Yep, that's it. So yeah, so um, again, Lisa's looking at the Dolly's version of the Seven of Cups. He omitted the veiled figure and left an empty cup, signifying missed opportunities. I mean, that could be a good interpretation of it, but um, again, it's that's more of a generalized interpretation of it. Um, it could also be um, making space as well. Um, so I'm, I'm like, <laughs> let me take away my overlay for a second here. So I, I mean, I love my agenda and everything, but it's blocking out my face right now. Um, yeah. So what I see when I'm looking at the seven of cups and the Dolly deck, um, is perhaps not filling up all of the cups to make room or to make space for something. Um, because, and I'll, sometimes this is a message that comes up, um, in tarot readings with my clients where it's just like, it, it, well, if you've completely over scheduled yourself, then where is room for that, that relationship that you want to have, or where is there room to reconnect with someone or where is there room to, and it's just like, there is no room. So you have to make room and then you have to, you have to make the space for that, that relationship or, or what, whatever you're trying to manifest fit in. You know, 
And it is kind of a little bit of more of a woo woo or magical practice where it's just like set it and forget about it, but also like making space for it, making time for um, that white space in your mind or in your manifestation so that, you know, good things can fill in from that. Yeah, and also rest as well. So making space, making space for new opportunities or maybe even rest. Yeah, exactly. That's how I would interpret that particular one. So, but um, as as other people mentioned and yourself as well, um, stage cards are mostly going to be in the more traditional Rider Waite Smith tarot deck, either the the classic or as I said before, this is the radiant Rider Waite Smith that I'm working with. Um, and it would be um, the artist art artist choice or the artistic choice to um, include those stage cards or not in a modern deck. So I think it's fascinating. I'm absolutely like flabbergasted at um, the amount of information that you can get out of those 13 cards. Have those be the backdrop, have those be the, the scrim. Um, and, you know, as Sasha wrote, you know, we may never know the reason why it was those 13. Um, but, but, you know, there is no, there's no coincidences. There's no accidents really in the symbology that's going on in this particular deck or in any tarot deck. Um, and the more we use that symbology, the more the meaning grows or the more the, um, there's a personal connection or, that's what makes that particular card that particular tarot card. Um, when I went to um, get my uh, tattoo done of the High Priestess tarot card, um, not only did I poll people to ask them, well, what makes, what makes the High Priestess card the High Priestess card for you? Um, I also remembered my own um, personal associations with the High Priestess card. And I wanted to make sure those were um, those were included in the imagery that I chose for my tattoo permanently on my body. Um, as you'll see here, you see the crescent moon, you see the bare foot on the crescent moon. Um, you can't really see it. And also this is my, this is my Vax arm. <laughs> so it's very difficult for me to hold it up right now. Um, there's a pomegranate in there. There's the scroll, there's the pillars, there's the, um, triple goddess or, um, uh, moon phases on the crown. Um, her, there's the way her face is depicted. Um, all of it had meaning for me. Um, so it's not just about what artists have done. It's also what personal connections um, do those symbols have for you? What makes the hermit card the hermit card? What makes the seven of cups the seven of cups for you? So it all ties in there and there is a reason for pretty much every symbol that goes into um, each and every one of the 78 cards of the tarot why the 13 stage cards we're never going to know why those those particular cards and why 13 but it's significant <laughs> it's significant we may never know the reason why so dina's saying ice pack helps vax arm yes i know <laughs> and i thank you for the tip i actually iced it last night um my husband's icing his as well it definitely definitely helped but it's still a little it's smarting a little bit. All right, so let me, um, any uh, any questions you guys have, I'm gonna look through some of these books to see if we have any additional information. Um, but we got a lot out of this particular episode. Pleasant, pleasantly surprised and fascinated. This doesn't have an index, so. <laughs> Selected moments from terror and brief guide to terror structure. Hmm. I 
I just find it very interesting that there's such em emphasis on the court cards, but there's not a lot. I like I really don't notice a lot of people talking about stage cards. It's interesting. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is a homework, homework heavy episode. <laughs> Katie's saying a lot of homework to ponder. Lots of homework to ponder. All right, I think that's it. I think we have a, a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of things to consider, a lot of homework to ponder, as Katie says. Um, Lisa says, honestly, this is the first I've heard of stage cards. I've been reading off and on for 25 years. I know, right? That's kind of crazy. And I don't really emphasize like when I'm when I'm with I'm when I'm reading with clients, I don't really go into such detail with with particular like that kind of nitty gritty um, analysis of the 13, 13 cards out of the 78 cards. But um, I'll definitely be thinking about that. Um, in my next few readings and seeing if I can apply some of that understanding to it. Um, as long as it helps rather than hinder my interpretations, like I'm all for it. Um, and I, I read fairly intuitively, like um, I'll usually, but, but even a professional tarot reader will sometimes get stuck on a card and just draw a blank because it's like it's not talking to me right now or it's not immediately apparent um, what this card is trying to say or this card is like kind of out of left field or is not jiving with the rest of the cards in the reading. Um, and so that's a that's an issue that happens whether you're a professional tarot reader or not. So and as Lisa is saying, you've been reading cards for off and on for 25 years and this is the first you're hearing of stage cards, well then um, maybe you weren't meant to know about stage cards until right now. <laughs> I don't know, but like I really haven't heard it discussed at a lot either. So maybe this is fodder for a workshop I need to do or workshop that Sasha needs to do. I don't know. I'm gonna be doing more research about stage cards for definite. Very interesting stuff. Uh, so Dina says, all the world's a stage. Exactly. That's, that was going to be my intro. <laughs> but I figured, nah, we don't need to be too cheesy about it. Um, so any questions, any lingering questions about stage cards of the Rider Waite Smith Tarot before we move into the weekend forecast and wrap up the episode? I'm going to hydrate. Oh, <clears throat> while I'm hydrating and while I'm thinking about it. So there is an auction going on for an original piece of artwork um, in order to benefit um, Melissa Sonova. 100% of the proceeds will be going to Melissa. And I need to find um, the information that I got from Lucy Morningstar. Um, it is, I believe, the Nine of Wands um, of which uh, Melissa is depicted. Um, and see this gorgeousness right back here. I'll pick it up and show it to you guys. Um, so this is me as the Page of Wands um, in the upcoming tarot deck. And Melissa, is I believe the nine of wands, if I'm remembering correctly. So it is an auction um, to benefit Melissa, 100% of the proceeds go to Melissa, and it's gonna be, your, you are bidding for this kind of thing, the original artwork, but instead of this, which is mine, <laughs> you would be bidding on the nine of wands. Um, so let me put this down and find 
the auction link really quickly um, because I know it's there. Let me see. Maybe it's six of wands. I don't know. Let's see. I'll have to look. Ah, found it. Okay. Got it. No, hold on one second here. That is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Okay. So this is the auction link right here. I'm going to post it over here. Um, and for those of you who are tuning in to on Instagram, you can go and follow Lucy Morningstar and um, she can give you that information. I believe it's going on until um, tonight. So to, the, today is the last day of the auction. So I wanted to make sure I shouted it out. Why can't I find it? <laughs> All right, sharing that. There we go. Okay. And I am going to share that here as well. So it's just bit, bit, bitly. Um, slash nine of wands. So I was right. <laughs> and it's a beautiful, beautiful painting. And um, I wish I could display it here. Hold on. Anyway, you can follow <laughs> you can follow that after the episode and go ahead and bid on that painting and 100% of the proceeds will be going to Melissa. So, thank you for listening to um, this sponsored uh, <laughs> sponsored advertisement for a good cause, of course. Um, all right, are we ready for the weekend forecast? And is anyone feeling a particular way? Um, are we feeling starseed tarot tonight? Are we feeling work your light? <coughs> Excuse me, or are we feeling the moonology? Pick your poison. Otherwise, I will pick for you. If I don't get any um, response, I will choose intuitively your weekend forecast, aka weekend ass kick, ass kicking. <laughs> All right, I'm going with the star seed tarot. I mean, <laughs> oracle. <laughs> it is not a tarot deck, it's an oracle deck. Oh, <laughs> too late, Katie. <laughs> All right, what do we most need to know for this weekend? And you already have the astrology as well.
E. I don't know if we pulled this uh, recently. I don't know. Maybe the message is similar, but not the the card itself is not the same. So what we are getting for the weekend forecast from the Starseed Oracle by Rebecca Campbell and Daniel Noel is karmic relationships, Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, and conflict. So let us go to the companion book. And I will hold this up as I'm talking about it. So I'm gonna hold it up back here so you all can see it on Instagram, but also on screen up here. <clears throat> so the constellation Orion is thought by many to have been a place of great polarity and eventual unity. Some believe that many star seeds who were part of this cosmic history are incarnate on earth now and are playing out karmic relationships from Orion times. Perhaps you're one of them. Polarity causes conflict and highlights separation. However, because of this, conflict can also result in unity and growth. Too many misunderstandings are caused when we don't open our heart and mind and see things from a different point of view. When we go into reactive second-guessing mode instead of gathering the courage to open our heart, we should admit that we may have reacted because we have our own woundings and then find mutual ground. We're all innocent children looking to be seen, understood, and cherished. It's much harder to grow closer through conflict than it is to grow further apart. And yet that's the invitation of conflict. It's easy to react and take things personally. It's more challenging to see the innocence of all involved and find a way to grow closer through the conflict. It's the relationships that we grow the most. How can you soften your heart and drop your defenses enough to see things from a different point of view? How can you see the innocence of all involved? How can you learn to see the similarities rather than the differences? Guys, so um, inquiry questions. Which relationships do you find the most challenging? How can you see things from a different perspective? And how are you being called to allow growth through the conflict. Woo! <laughs> so that is your weekend forecast from the Starseed Oracle. We are being asked to heal our karmic relationships. We are asked to see things from new and different perspectives. We are asked to not take things so personally. That came up a little bit before when we were talking about stage cards, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, we're being asked to see the similarities even when we are in that state of conflict instead of seeing the differences. After the conflict comes unity, right? <laughs> so that is your weekend forecast. I hope it helps all of you. Um, who knows what's going on with YouTube right now? Uh, Dina says, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go ahead and take down the weekend forecast and also the overlay here, getting ready to apply, <laughs> getting ready to uh, wrap up the episode. Um, thank you all very much. So um, I want to remind people that we do this every Friday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with different uh, tarot divination topics, whatever you want to talk about. So next week, so Imaginary Restaurant is saying, that, thank you. This has been informative and very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for stopping by and you know, listening and enjoying it and learning the information. It was very cool for me too. I'm definitely going to be doing more research about stage cards and maybe we'll do a part two of this episode as well. Um, so yeah, we do this every Friday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Next week's episode, we are going to be scheduling for the month of May. So for the past couple of months, we've been doing um, more of a... <clears throat> 
start of the month episode where I ask you which topics you want to talk about for that month. And I also look at the energy of the month, different dates or holidays or celebrations and try and tie in some of those topics as well. Um, so I did take a week off from um, episodes uh, a couple of weeks ago. So a couple of the episodes that I thought I was doing this month, we're gonna be doing next month. So we're probably going to be doing the pendulums episode next month. Um, but you know, let me know which topics you wanna learn about. I would love to be able to teach them to you. Um, so Lisa is saying, love you so much, Hillary. Can't wait to see you in person again. Me too, Lisa. Love you too. Uh, soon. I mean, my arm is sore for a good reason. So, you know, we're all getting vaccinated and we're all staying safe. And I hope all of you are doing the same, making sure that you're taking care of yourselves um, and each other as well. You know, we're not out of the woods yet. I was just talking to my sister about this uh, yesterday and um, she was saying that um, she was speaking to someone who's like a retired scientist and he's saying that things won't normalize until five years from now. And she was kind of shocked by that. And I was not. <laughs> so I think I, I think get used to wearing masks, um, fashion, Fashion, make it, you know, make it match your outfit. I was doing that yesterday. I was very stylish. Thank you very much. Um, masks are, you know, keeping you safe and you are also can express yourself much like you would express yourself in the stage cards of the tarot, right? Bringing it back to tarot. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. I will see you again next week, Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Um, and until then, I remain your hostess of the mostess, Hillary, professional tarot reader, demystifying the mystical and putting you in touch with the most beautiful of gifts, your own intuition. Because yes, my friends, don't argue with me. You have intuition. If you'd like to book a reading with me, totally up for it. Tarotbyhillary.com, Skype, email, and phone options are available at this time. Take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful night. Um, and for those of you tuning in on YouTube, um, you can check out other episodes um, using this end screen that I'm about to put up right now. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye.